Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we are going to be focusing on is the Manjaro 21.1 release. I think it's Pavo. Uh, I know I'm a little bit late to the punch with this video, but this was released the same time as Zorn 16. I was really focused on that at the time. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and do one of these first impression type videos. Uh, I'm going to quickly run through some of the things that are new. And then I'm going to run through a system install and check out uh, this version of Manjaro. So first, what are some of the changes? There have been some major improvements into Calamaris, which is the default installer for Manjaro, including enhanced support for better FS. Uh, if you don't know, in the simplest terms possible, uh, better FS is a Linux file system that does a really good job when it comes to backing up and restoring because the actual snapshots for these systems uh, to back up to are incredibly small. So it's really good when it comes to that. Additionally, swap files on BetterFS file systems are now fully supported. The GNOME edition had a major rework of GNOME 40, which is what we're gonna be primarily focusing on in this video because you could probably tell by my desktop, I'm actually currently in GNOME 40 running Endeavor OS. And if you've been watching this channel for some time, you know that personally, I'm a KDE person. I'm always in KDE Plasma, but because most of the uh, reviews I do with GNOME systems, that is really the only con in a lot of them, uh, I'm forcing myself to use GNOME as my daily, uh, daily workflow just to see if I can get a hang of it. And so far, I'm actually getting quite used to it with some of the uh, extensions I have, making this a very nice desktop experience. But that's off topic. Some of the other things that have been changed is in that GNOME 40, there's apparently the Manjaro legacy layout and some other things. Firefox web browser within that GNOME 40, it now is uh, shipping with the GNOME desktop style by default to give it a better consistent look with your actual environment. And now the Plasma Edition is going to be shipping with 5.22. Not going to really be focusing on the Plasma or XFCE Edition in this video, but if you're more interested in Plasma, I actually have a separate video where I quickly went over the new Breeze theming. So I would recommend you check out the video if that is what you're more interested in. So with that said, if you're interested, this article will be linked down below. So let's go ahead and jump into VirtualBox and install this. All right, so we are now booted into our live instance of Manjaro. Uh, we have our welcome page here. For now, let's go ahead and close this out. And you can see we are running Manjaro GNOME. Now, I'm not really gonna explore the system too much at the moment. So we're gonna go ahead and go straight to the installer and run through this process. If you've installed the Linux distributions one or two times, Calamaris, you're probably familiar with it. So we go to blast through here. I'm using English keyboard. And here is where we can apparently set up some uh, better FS support. So erase entire disk and let's go ahead and select better FS. Let, let's do that and make sure everything boots and runs fine. Uh, no swap, we don't really need it. Um, no manual partitioning, just gonna do the whole disk. So let's go ahead and go next. All right, I'm gonna fill this out real quick. All right, and once you got this all filled out, we can hit next, summary, install, install now and then it's going to run through the installation process. Now, while it does this, let's just open up our file manager and see the kind of theming that they're using here. Uh, standard dark, dark gray on green, typical thing I'd expect. So I'm gonna let this install, and once we reboot, we're gonna take a uh, deeper dive into the system as well as some of the uh, GNOME layouts that they have going on and things like that. All right, we're here, we're in. This is Manjaro. GNOME 21.1, doing our first boot into the system after it has been freshly installed. We can see that good old GNOME 40 horizontal workspace action, absolutely beautiful. So let's go over here. You can see there's a little uh, issue when we first booted in, those buttons were white, so not a big deal at all, but just, just a little something something we noticed here. So first we're just gonna run through the application. So let's go ahead and open this up here. Uh, we got some things in some folders predefined for us, so that is nice. We have Geary, Maps, Pamac, which is an absolutely wonderful graphical package manager on a Arch-based system. Gthumb, Videos, Layouts, which we're going to jump into momentarily. We have Lollipop, the Manjaro user guide, a document scanner. Web Apps, which I'm pretty sure that's a Linux Mint tool, so it's cool they have that in here. And of course, Cheese. 
Now within some of these folders, we have accessories, including a torrent client icon, browser, weather. Let's see what our weather application looks like. So let's do my zip code. People always freak out when I put in my zip code. So this is a beautiful <laughs> weather application here. Uh, it's 70 degrees, it's not smoky anymore, so that's good. Um, yeah, this is nice. Okay, now's not the time for this. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to my applications. Uh, we have the Kavanta Manager, nice. We have the GNOME Tweak Tool. Um, basic things you'd expect, some GNOME, GNOME extensions, some firmware, passwords and keys. Let's see what's going on in uh, GNOME extensions here see what we got so it looks like we have a little bit of a graphical issues here i'm not sure if it's my installer if this is just a little bug but we have app indicator that's good uh, applications menu arc menu so there's a lot of things installed but disabled we have dash to dock installed uh, what probably happens is a lot of these probably enabled depending on what layout you're using um, pamac updates indicator gnome ui improvements what's this Go to the settings for that. Uh, hide search, hide increase thumbnail size. Okay, so just some little tweaks and stuff to make everything look better. Um, I, I'm moderately concerned about this uh, little bit of bugginess in some of these buttons here. Uh, let's go ahead and close this out, jump back into our applications and see what else we got going on here. Uh, let's jump into Office. We have the only Office desktop editors. So that, that wasn't an option in the installer at one point, but it looks like they took out LibreOffice. So I'm not too sure how I'm feeling about that. I haven't checked out Manjaro in a, a couple months, quite a while. So let's go into the layouts. Let's see what's going on here, because this is what is truly fun to play with. So the default Manjaro kind of is like the, uh, the Mac style in Zorin. You got this bottom dock down here and your typical GNOME layout other than that. Uh, so let's go ahead, this is Manjaro Legacy. Let's apply that. Just throws it over to the side and throws these vertical workspaces. Uh, we have the traditional, and this will just put it on the bottom, kind of like what I'm actually using on my primary desktop. Yeah, it's very similar, it's using Arc Menu. Um, I have mine way more customized than this, but the cool thing is if you want to customize this, we just go right click, Arc Menu Settings, and from here, you could do something like, ooh, I'm, yeah, I'm really not sure about this. Is this just me with this, these glitchy UI elements, or is that just something that snuck through in the update? Uh, but if I go into menu layout, you could go ahead and go to like a modern, and we could do 11, for example, apply that. And then we have the uh, Windows 11 style start menu within Manjaro, simple as that. Additionally, we have Unity, so if I go ahead and apply that, it brings the panel on the side just like the old school traditional Unity desktop. Uh, we have Manjaro, we saw that. We have GNOME, and this is just good old stock GNOME 40, exactly how you would expect that. And then we have tiling. Now, if I do so recall, here, let's close this out for a sec. I really do like tiling in GNOME, but the, the actual tiling effects within Manjaro GNOME is awesome how they work this out. So like if I open up weather, for example, it's gonna open up full screen. And up here, I could open up another application and let's say like a text editor, for example. And then let's do another one and let's open up tweaks. And you can see how it's that tiling layout. But it's, the, the tiling layout in Manjaro is really nice because it's very mouse friendly. If you're somebody like me who is uh, highly dependent on mouse usage, you could go over and move these applications around through here. You can do everything with the hotkeys, of course. And then over here, you have your different workspaces that you can go ahead and switch in between with your tiling window layout. Absolutely fantastic. I use this, well, I did use this for a couple months on a laptop and this layout specifically. So those are our layouts. Let's go ahead and open up that layout application again and jump back into the, well, let's see, I'm gonna go into traditional and see if it keeps our settings. So it doesn't. So it looks like if you switch layouts, it's not gonna keep our settings, well, at least our arc menu settings in those specific layouts. So let's do something else again. Let's just change the layout to, let's go traditional. And what's it right now? Let's do no, something more obvious. So let's go uh, touch style. Let's go elementary, apply that. Okay, so there's our menu. And if we switch over to Manjaro, for example, 
apply that. Let's go back to traditional. And yeah, it resets it. So that kind of sucks. It doesn't keep your uh, layout settings. But usually if somebody wants to use a specific layout, they pick it and stick with it. But that's just a little something I noticed here. Overall, this is a great looking system. I noticed a couple little bugs and everything. But yeah, they've done a very good job uh, thus far at integrating GNOME 40. You can see right there in my arc menu, I have shortcuts to the terminal, tweaks, software, so I can open up Pamac through here, and then run NeoFetch. So we are running the 5.13 Manjaro kernel. We're running ZSH, and this is currently GNOME 40.3. And the default package count is 1112, and we are using 780 megabytes of RAM out of the gate. So, very nice update. Uh, if you guys are interested in reading those release notes once again, you could do that down below. Additionally, within that uh, page or that forum post that has those release notes, you can go ahead and actually download it, either install it on your primary machine, or load it up in VirtualBox like I did to go ahead and play with it. With all of that said, I would like to thank the YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have an executive level supporter. Thank you, Mitchell Valentino, for that. Additionally, we have three producers here on the show. We have Timo, Anthony, Phil Mac, and Kyle. Thank you guys so much for, for your support. It is truly humbling. And thank you to all the Techie and Techie Plus members that are supporting the channel. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there'll be a link in the description, or you could just do this through YouTube and you get extra badges and emojis and things like that. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you all have a beautiful day and goodbye.